welcome to today's webinar. So I'll just give everybody a couple moments to just get in, get settled. If you want, uh, just drop in the chat where you are visiting us from today. I am in Vancouver, Canada. And if you have been watching the news, just to let you all know, I am safe. I escaped all of the flooding. If any of my fellow BC people are here, I hope you guys all made out safe and sound. Uh, today, I do have Laura and Rebecca with me. So it'll be just a moment. I'll just give everybody a couple more moments to just hop on in. Hi. Oh, we got lots of people here. Oh, Laura, we have somebody from Anchorage. Laura used to actually live up in Alaska before she made her way to Portland. Yep, Georgia, Charlotte, nice. Hi, everybody. Okay, so I am just going to make my slides just a little bit bigger. Here we go, so welcome everybody. So today's webinar is all about customer connections and loyalty with your parent portal. Oopsies. So like I just said, my name is Marie Baldwin. I'm the content creator and training specialist here at Jackrabbit. And today in the background answering our questions are Laura and Rebecca. They are both awesome support reps and also my right hands when it comes to doing all things webinars and training. So first of all, thank you, ladies. I would not be able to do this without you. So let's have a little question. chat about your parent portal. So your Jackrabbit parent portal it is your link between your Jackrabbit database and your parents, and it allows your existing customers to manage their account with you online at any time of day. The Jackrabbit Parent Portal is a powerful, powerful tool. I cannot emphasize that enough. Not only can your parents benefit from all it has to offer, but you can customize your parent portal to display only the features and the information that you individually want to show your families. So let's talk about connections. So your, your parent portal, it is a vital link between your client's first interaction with your business, whether they discovered you through a website or a social media account. And having your parent portal set up to optimize your parent's experience will help instill customer loyalty. So let's chat a little bit about the parent portal and mobile devices. So I'm not talking about the mobile app. I just mean their individual smart devices. So there are 3.2 billion smartphone users from around the world. In addition to that, there are 1.14 billion tablet users worldwide. Guys, that's a lot of people that are using their phones and their tablets every day. And did you know, 88% of the time that people spend on their phone is spent on a mobile app. And that's significantly higher than the time being spent to make phone calls or text. And almost half of the people using their smartphones open an app 11 or more times in one day. So your parents do have the ability to save your parent portal link as a little app on their phone. So just one other moment. So let's talk about you know, some of the things that your parents can do in the parent portal. This is just a very high level. We will touch on most, if not all of these today. So they can connect anytime. They can access virtual classes, schedule makeups and absences. They can never say that they forgot to sign your agreements because you can push them to do that. Same thing with missing tuition payments. They can manage all of their billing information. They have quick access to all of their transaction details. So whether or not they say to you sometimes maybe like, oh, I didn't get an email, they can still get in and check everything through their portal. They can claim their spots for classes and events. They can view classes as they are happening. And they can also check on their students' skill progress. And again, get email notifications for their enrollments, and there's also the ability that you can customize the field for your student's gender. So let me just check the chat here really quickly, see if anything has come in. Awesome. Okay, so first up, we are going to have a look at your parent portal setup. So let me just one moment, everybody. I just need to get my database up. So 
going to pull this over for you so everybody should be able to see that right now. Let me just one second. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is have a look at all of your setup under your parent portal. So you will find that under your gear settings and down here under parent portal. And then we're just going to come here. So first we have your news and announcements. So this is your general announcement that you can set up for everybody when they log in. And then next, let's just talk about your settings. So the first one here you will see is activate portal. So maybe if uh, you, you're working on something, working on priority enrollment, for example, you might wanna disable your portal. You're absolutely able to do that from time to time. It's not a, once you have it set up, it has to stay set up and turned on the entire time. And the next, over here on the left-hand side, you have the blanket ability to be able to decide if you want to display transactions, students, classes, enrollment, and event registration. So I know some of our clients, they do not allow parents to enroll students, so you could actually turn that off. So next, the first section here is your communication. So normally this is your main organization ID. So many of you probably have like an info at sallysdancestudio.com. So this is where you want everything to come to. And then next you get to decide which email alert you want. So do you want an email every time somebody updates policies, updates their payment method, or every time a student enrolls? You can turn that on, you can turn that off. It is totally up to you. It will go to this address that is here. And the next, do you want to show your class dates in your email confirmation, yes or no? And same thing, do you want to show your category one in your email confirmation? And the next, we have your login message. And then do you want to show the link to the portal video on your login page? I highly recommend keeping this one turned on. When I do go to log into the portal, I'll actually show you quickly what that little video looks like. But we do keep that uh, guy updated all of the time. It was just recently updated only a couple of months ago. And then next we have your portal video message. So I've just got in there new to our portal. Watch this quick video to see how to access and manage your account with us. The next we have your family and student information. So again, all of this is optional, how much information you want shown that is totally up to you. So we've got update contact and student information, update e-payment schedule, update membership type, hide the school or grade levels, add students, show student skills, show student absences and attendance, and then show attendance issues. So attendance issues falls under the late, leave early, or observing category that your staff have when they're entering absences. And then next we have the gender, can they update? That is optional, that's how I have it set. And just to show you, I'll just show this just once, all of these have optional, required, or hidden. So if you want them to have to update it, you can mark it as required. If you don't want it to show at all, you could always make it hidden. And then next we have your family user defined fields. So your user defined fields, you will update those under your gear icon, settings, general, and your drop down list right from your database. So these are just the ones that I have here. I have all of mine marked as required. And then same thing applies with your student, student user defined fields. You will update, update those, sorry, in the exact same spot. The next we have your fees and payments. So show transaction subtype the session, show payment method, show check number if you still take checks, show discounts, show the tax, and then show any unpaid amounts and then show transaction ID. This was just recently added in our last release. So for all of you right now, that is unchecked and that is why it is still unchecked on mine. So I'm just gonna check that now. So if you do want it to show, again, just come in here and check that. I do know that in some states, some countries that this was an ask. So we have that added in for you. And the next under the My Classes section in your parent portal, show instructor nickname, show student start date, show student drop date, show class start and end dates, and again, show that category one value. 
And the next down here under your class enrollment settings. So first one, enroll students, yes or no. Do you want to hide the instructor filter? Uh, allow enrollment at any location. So some people are have multiple locations. Sometimes the multiple locations are actually within the same physical area. And But for some of you, your multi-locations, they could be, actually, we have some that are in different countries. We have some that are in the northern U.S. and uh, in Canada. So that would be very organization specific there. Uh, prevent problem families from enrolling. So if you have a family on their billing info tab marked as a problem account, you can prevent them from enrolling. And oh, I missed that. Uh, prevent inactive families from enrolling. Uh, do you require a policy agreement for each enrollment? I have this checked off, uh, or sorry, not checked off, sorry. Uh, so that way my parents only have to update their policies on the date that I have it required for them. And then we have high category one filter, your category two, your category three. If I wanted to hide my day filter, actually I'm gonna turn this off, I don't want that one hidden. Uh, show class start date, show instructor nickname, show your category one value, and then next we have your class enrollment openings. So do you want this to show or do you want to hide the openings column? Again, this would be very specific to you. And then next we have your enrollment comment label. So you can call this anything you want. You could ask a specific question. You could mark that as required, no, or yes. And then if you do not allow inactive families to enroll, you can actually customize the message. So right now, if I had this checked to yes, if a, an inactive family tried to enroll in the portal, they would get this message. And then next I have, would you like to accept donations on behalf of the charity? I've got mine selected to yes, and I have my charity all set up already for Ronald McDonald House. So let me just see here. I'm just checking some questions that came in. Can we upload our branded video? Not in that section, but you could in your um, first message there. Uh, Nathan, not totally sure which screen. The gender drop down is not on mine. It may be hidden under your general settings, Christina. Um, if you want, just shoot in a quick ticket to support and they can help you out there. And let me just check here. Yes. Can we receive this presentation via email? Yes, Melissa, it will be sent out with a link to the recording tomorrow. And just check here. Okay, how is an inactive family defined in the system? An inactive family is anybody that does not have any current enrollments. So let's say, for example, we were, say, at last season, say last June, July, and a family was enrolled, and then they didn't enroll in September, they tried to log into the portal in October, they would be considered an inactive family. Awesome, lots of great questions. My charity donations is disabled, not configured. How do I change this? Actually, I have something for you guys. So just give me one second here. So if you want to learn more about the donations, you can bookmark this demo that I have here. This is, uh, it's in YouTube actually. So if you wanna go ahead, click on it and bookmark that for later to learn how to use the charitable don donations, you can. When I go into the act, my actual parent portal, I'll show you exactly how that looks. Uh, what reason would you want to prevent an inactive family for enrolling? It's honestly, Nathan, it's just an option. There are some people that do not want inactive families to enroll. So that way just covers that bucket for everyone. Okay, so now just one second. Okay, so next we are going to look at a couple of other settings. So there are some settings for your parent portal that are not controlled right here, but are actually controlled. 
under your gear icon. So the first one I want to talk about are your e-payment settings. So previously, if you have been around for a while, you would note that those e-payment settings, they used to actually be under the parent portal, but we've recently moved them out under your e-payment settings just so that everything is in the one place. So you would come to credit card, bank account settings, manage settings, and then right here for your parent portal settings. So for the most part, they are all the same questions that were there before. So which payments do you take? Can parents make payments through the portal? And then these are your options here. These are all the same like they used to be. So only pay balance in full. Select, select which fees to pay in full. Select which fees to pay in full or a partial payment. And then the last one is change payment amount. Payment is automatically applied to the oldest fee. Uh, just a little user tip for everybody. If you do get in here and you're not sure something, this question mark, if you click on it, it will actually bring you to the Help Center page. I'll just click this one for you just so you can see. So it actually opens up the Help Center page for you on that section. And then next we have, do you require parents to save a payment method before enrolling in a class? And then how do you want any credit card or bank account information on a parent's account to be managed? So can they update it for your credit card and your bank account and then would you like to be emailed when a parent makes a payment so just to let everybody know even though if you require a credit card to be on file and somebody wants to update they need to add their new bank account information and then they can remove the old so it's not going to let them even if you allow them to update it's not going to let them say totally remove a payment and then next we have your shopping cart preferences so this one is new, this section. Do you want to require payment upon checkout when parents are enrolling using the parent portal? So I have mine set to yes. Yes, require payments for classes and events. So the way I think of this is kind of like Amazon, right? I put something in my shopping cart on Amazon. Amazon is not going to ship that to me. I have to make the payment before. So basically it just means that the student is not considered enrolled. That spot is not taken until payment has been received. And then the next one down here, can parents check out using a payment method not previously saved? Right now, I have it turned off for no specific reason. That would just be a one-time card checkout. So let's just say, for example, Thanksgiving, I'm at my mom's, I'm registering my student into another class. My mom says, hey, I'm thankful for you guys. Let me pay for those classes and I could go in and she could put in her credit card information. It is not stored. It's just a one time credit card payment. So just a moment. So next, let's just talk really quickly about the makeups and absences. I'm just going to scroll on back up here. I'm just going to jump to my home page first to come right back from the beginning. So here under your gear icon, settings, general, and organization defaults. So I'm just gonna go over these really, really just high level for you. So you've got your makeup settings. Uh, do you allow makeups? Do you have an expiration on it? What is your class makeup group size limit? And then when it comes to your parent portal, what absences would you like parents to see? Do you want them to see all absences or do you want to limit it? So you can limit it to, you know, days, weeks, months, or you can say, I only want to display the last, I've got mine set to 20. You could change this to anything that you want. So if I wanted to, I could say, no, I only want them to just see the last 10 absences. Uh, allow parents to record an absence. Yes or no. So I do have that set to yes. And then we have our scheduling window. So can they schedule absences in the future? And then next down here, you will see this is new. Receive notifications when absences are scheduled. So just to talk about this for a little bit, when this originally came out, there was not an option for you to get a notification. And just to kind of give you the general, like big think of it is that when a staff member marks somebody absent in the parent portal, 
you were not getting a notification. So that is why they kind of kept that the same, but it was highly requested that this be added. So it has been added. So you can specify a certain email address if you want. If you wanted to add more than one email address, you can. Your instructors currently, it is being worked on, do get that uh, notification as well as it does go to the parent. And then do you allow your parents to schedule a makeup? Yes or no. And then we have these similarity rules. So same location, same instructor, yes or no. Same session, yes or no. Same gender, age, category one, two, or three. So just to touch on these, just very high level. If you have, for example, let's say same age range. So my student was in a class, the age range was four to six. So I want my students to have to register in a class that has that same age range. The age range of the new class has to be four to six. It can't be three to seven, even though four to six falls within that bracket. And same thing with instructor. If you have one instructor on the class, that same one instructor has to be the one instructor on the similar class. And then as well, we just got your lead time, your window for your makeups, and the same thing, your scheduling uh, window for future absences. Can inactive students schedule makeup? So I have mine set to no. So just to kind of touch on, because just a moment ago we talked about those inactive students. So that would mean if somebody, say last May, had an absence, and I have my window set really wide, if they have the ability to log into the parent portal, if I had this set to yes, even though they're not a current student, they can actually roll into a class and get that makeup, even though it's been say six, seven months later and they're currently not part of your organization. And then next, we've just got your message that you can schedule. So I've just got a title here. And then in mine, I've just got your makeup class has been scheduled. If a make scheduled makeup class is missed, it will not qualify for another makeup. And then can a makeup be canceled? And then again, what is that window? So those are all just very quickly your settings for your makeups and absences. And then next, some of you may have noticed uh, when I was going through the settings on the parent portal, I didn't talk anything about policies. So currently your policies are under your online registration form. But guys, this is going to be changing very, very soon. So let me get a thumbs up if you like what I'm about to say. So Jackrabbit keeps a copy of your policies for five years before they are purged. We recommend that you update your policies every year, every season, so that everybody has a current agreement date. But we have, for the last year, been totally revamping policies in Jackrabbit. So soon you're going to find it under your gear icon. Under settings, oopsies, this is currently in beta, so I can show it to you. Under policies, looks pretty different, hey? So why did we change it? Well, this is one of the highest voted and talked about things on Facebook, ticket request to support, and it was the ability to have different policies assigned to different classes. So like I said, we have been working on this for about a year, it is just about to wrap up beta testing. It is scheduled to be released on December the 16th. So is anybody uh, that's on today's webinar or any of you guys currently one of the beta testers? Let me see. Yes, nice. So let me just talk about this really quickly. So what's going to happen is that all of your policies that you currently have now under your online registration form, they are going to automatically come over to here and they will automatically be assigned to all of your classes. But what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to have policy groups. So you can see right here. So I've got mine. They're pretty just kind of, you know, blanket. I've got a competition team group. I've got a 2021 season group and I've got my summer group. So you can see under this competition team, I have two policies. So I've got my consent to electronic signature policy and my withdrawal and termination policy. So you can see I could click on these if I wanted to come in and actually look at them. Right now, I do not have that assigned to any classes. And then right here, my 21, 2022 season, I've got these five policies. 
And then you can see I have this policy group assigned to 54 classes. And then same thing with summer. So all of my individual policies are here. And then, but I can assign these policy groups to all of my classes. So there's going to be a lot more on this. Uh, let's see, can we limit which classes allow makeups yet? Uh, not individually, Anne. Okay, so just a second. So let's just see how this would look. So I'm gonna come to my all classes. And let's just go to, I've got a category one of competition. There it is. So I've got all of these here. So I would be able to come here and I could add a policy group. So I could add this competition team to there. If I wanted, I could add multiple. So then now all of these classes, or these two classes, sorry, have that policy group assigned to them. So that's how easy that is going to be able to happen for you. And then next, I feel like Santa Claus. It's only, I was going to say October, it's November. But another uh, thing that I'm going to talk to you about just very briefly are registration fees. So just while we're on the topic of what's coming soon to the parent portal, I have a special sneak peek at another highly requested feature from the idea portal. It's actually number four, and it is the ability to allow registration fees to post in the parent portal. This new feature is currently in beta. So we're just going to have a quick look at how, not just how flexible it is, but honestly, it is very, very user friendly. So guys, give me a thumbs up in the chat if you are excited to have registration fees post in the parent portal. Yeah. So just like pretty much all of your big, big settings, uh, we're just gonna come here to the gear, settings, registration fees. So you will see right here on the left, we've got new families. So new families, this is exactly how it is right now on the online registration form. There is nothing at all that is different. When do you post a fee? Always or only when enrolling into a class, the amount, your max amount, your transaction type, subtype, note, all of these are exactly the same. But then you will see existing families. So do you charge a registration fee? When you choose to post registration fees to existing families or existing students, you have the option to post the fees in your customer's parent portal enrollment. So the very first question is yes or no. So of course I've got mine set to yes, just to show you what it would look like. If it was no, then everything is blank. And then it steps out pretty much the exact same way as the current for the online registration fees. So where do I want it to post? So I've got, you know, post the registration fees in Jackrabbit and, or when I'm enrolling in Jackrabbit so through the database or the parent portal, uh, I've got all of my values set up the same as my online registration fee. You do not have to have it exactly the same. You might say for brand new students, my registration fee is going to be $250. Returning students, it's going to be, oops, that should be 25 there. Uh, for my you know, existing families, it could be something totally different. And then same thing here. So you know, what do you want it to be? So on my registration fee, I had that set up as a transaction type of registration fee. On my parent portal, I've got it set up as my annual membership. I need this. When will it be available? Very soon. It is tentatively scheduled right now for the 16th of December. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, we're past the 16th of November. So your subtype, your note, same thing, category one. And then the only thing that will be a little bit different from the um, online registration is this as of date. We will post this fee as long as there has not been one with the same criteria since. 
So let's say, for example, it's annual, right? You only want to charge it once a year, but your families may register for a class in September, October, November. So you can put in through dates, kind of like how duplicate detection works for posting your tuition fees. It is going to work the exact same way. Oh, Rebecca. Okay, so you can uh, sign up for beta. I will give you guys the email address for beta testing uh, at the end of this. It is currently going on. I can't guarantee that it is you know, not full, but definitely if, if this is something that you want to beta, please send in that email and I will shoot that up for you at the end. And let's see, okay, so now that we have gone over every single setting, uh, let's have a look at your parent portal. So I'm just going to bring mine over to the screen that I'm sharing. So you'll see right here, this watch video, this is what I was talking about before. So it's this video right here. So I'll just play it for you a little. So you can see, so it just steps through, the sound is not coming through only because I have my mic set up, uh, but it just steps through letting your parents know exactly what to do. So especially if you are newer and your families may not be you know, totally used to Jackrabbit, this is a great, great option for them. So let's have a look. So I'm gonna sign into my portal. So the very first thing you land on when you sign in is your dashboard. So you can get to your dashboard from here. So on your dashboard, it's just kind of a high level overview. You can see your current balance. You can look for classes. It shows your students and the classes that they are in. Uh, one thing some of you may notice, uh, this view details. So this has recently been added as well. So if I click on this, it actually now shows my description. So my description that I have on my summary for uh, in my class, in my database, now does show in your parent portal. So that way, if you have some kind of specific information in there, your parents now have access to that. So I'm just going to return out of there. And then as well, we have access to a Zoom, your Zoom link if you need that. And then if there are any resources added to a class, you can click that. So right here, this is just a link to just a YouTube video. So just if you wanted to, you know, record and upload it uh, to a private channel, you could do that. That's a great option that I have seen it used for as well. And then I'm just gonna come down here, right here. So some people were asking uh, just, you know, a little while ago about, you know, they're having to track vaccine status or, you know, tracking back when they had to track temperatures. God forbid we ever have to do that again. But what some people have done, if they have actually put this, this right here, it says vaccine tracking. When I click on it, it does open a Google Doc. This is actually the virtual class link. So that is where that is. But your virtual class link, you can have that link out to you know, like a Zoom, but you can also link it out to a Google Doc. And then you have the ability to change the verbiage. So that is why that says vaccine tracking there for you. So that is your option there. So I'm just going to scroll back up here. Next, we have your billing and your payment. So that is, it does include this here and your pay now, but it does give you some more information. So you can see I re just previously entered into show my transaction ID. So now my transaction ID shows there. But also on my settings, I gave my families the ab ab ability, sorry, to update their payment, uh, update their e-payment schedule and their membership type. So for example, I could come in here and I could decide, I don't wanna be on the 10th of the month, I wanna be on the 15th of the month, I could do that. So I'm just gonna cancel out of that. And then next right here, we have a list to all of the classes and events. So it does show what my students are currently enrolled in. But then if I wanted to find classes, I could find classes here and I have my spots left shown so I can see that. We can filter it down to show it for all ages or just only ages for my student. And then same thing if I wanted to register my student into an event, we can add that there. And again, we could also put in 
different filters. So if I wanted a certain price range or a certain day of the week, I could filter that out as well. And then next, let's talk about Spot TV, everybody. So just to come back to my classes and events here, is Spencer's class right here this acro class so you'll know it has this little badge here that says spot tv so if i have a class if i'm an organization that i have do have spot tv hooked up this is how your parents say experience looks like they can come up here to spot tv i can select my channel and then right here. So let's see if there's anybody in. This is just preloaded. We're not actually like streaming somebody, but this is how it would look. So whatever room that you had that camera assigned to, then your parents are actually able to come in. And not just your parents. Uh, when you they sign up for Spot TV, there is the option if you want, uh, are you a parent or are you a caregiver? Uh, a lot of daycares use this. I was actually somewhere this summer. I ran into somebody uh, when I was vacationing and she was telling me that her you know, daughter had moved uh, to Vancouver and she was like, look, I can even see the girls. And she like showed me and they were having their nap time. So parents absolutely love this. And then next, I'm just going to show you right here, this give. So this is how the donations look. So if you do have donations set up, all of this is customizable. So I've just got you see an explanation of Ronald McDonald House. And then these are my donation increments that I have set up. So I've got give 10, 20, 50, or 100. So I'll just show you exactly what that looks like. So if I clicked on give 10, then it just asked me that. And then I'll just put that in. And then it just takes that right away. Just processes just that donation. So that is aside from any of my other billing that is on my account. If I did have classes, they, they would show in my shopping cart. And then next, let's just have a look here under the hamburger menu. So you will see right here. So dashboard is the same as this dashboard, the same as when you first log in. And then account. So you will see right here, I've got this little two. And this is because I have requested additional information. So my family now has to come in here click OK, and then and they need to add any of that additional information that I had requested. So I'm just going to come back out of this. Again, classes and events is here. It's the same as classes and events here. And then next, let's just go ahead and look at the absences and makeups. So I do have the ability to turn that on and I'll show you just how easy and like seamless it is for your parents. They just click on submit an absence, click on who it applies to. I'm going to say it applies to both. And let's just say we're going to take a week off next week for Thanksgiving. So we're going to be gone from the 24th. We're going to come back on the first vacation. I don't say vacation. And then the next step, which classes? Yeah, oopsies. Yes. And yes, I'm going to just, I can click check all and submit. So you can see these are all of my absence it is. And then I can view my schedule impacts. So right here, if I want to schedule my makeup, I absolutely can. I have a time limit on my makeup. So I have until December 23rd to get that set up. So if I click on schedule a makeup, right here don't see any makeups that work for you call your location to schedule your makeup that verbiage is actually going to be changing very very soon let me just see here mm -mm. yes yeah, so this one here does have some availability the way i have it set up so i can just click here and it's selected i can submit it and just says your makeup class has been scheduled if a scheduled makeup class is missed it will not qualify for another makeup so that is that a little bit of verbiage i had just shown you so that is how easy it is for your parents to be able to go in and schedule their makeups and then again we've got access to your spot tv access to your donations from the hamburger menu 
uh, any of your latest announcements. And then right here, these are the messages. So these are any emails that you have sent your families, they are able to get that. So literally, like just right now, when my uh, when I scheduled my absence, when I scheduled my makeup, I got an email and a copy of that email is automatically in here. So if a parent is ever telling you that they can't find something, then just let them know, you know what, just log into your portal. It is absolutely there. They do get a notification as well. So let me just check a couple of things, make sure I didn't miss anything that I wanted to let you guys know. You cannot customize an announcement by class. You can customize an announcement. Uh, just get this one back over here for you. Oopsies. So let's just say here uh, under my families on my miscellaneous tab, you can customize a, an announcement for the parent portal login message. Uh, if you had something specific, you could put it on your class summary page and that will show in your parent portal. Let me just get something else up for you really quickly here. There we go, back to my demo. Okay. So Laura and Rebecca, you guys are busy answering questions. Uh, can we customize the verbiage? Absolutely, you can. Is there now an option that even though a student was in a certain category one and they switched to a different category, they can still use their makeups now in their new class category. No, it would be whatever the category was on that class. So let's just say I was in swim level one, category one, and I had a makeup and then I up moved up to swim level two, category two. If I wanted to do the makeup for that swim one and I had that it had to be in the same category, they could only come into another swim category one class, even though they're currently in a category two class. Uh, will there be a replay of the video? I was <laughs> terrific by a walk in. I totally get it. I've been uh, hoping Amazon doesn't come knock on my door. So uh, get that. We will be sending out a copy of the slide deck and a replay link for all of you uh, tomorrow. Uh, let's see. We have Open Gym set as an event and now access your makeup class. Can you set it to have the option to sign up for the particular event? No, Courtney, but that's a really good idea. Should definitely add that. I don't know if there's a way to link it, but I feel like there could be. Uh, just checking back here, Laura or Rebecca, you can ping me if I've missed anything. Is there a way to have families do a health check before class through the portal? Uh, Jennifer, the only way really would be what I had just showed with uh, by using the Google Doc. That would be the best. So uh, if you need any help at all or have any questions, if I went through something today and you're like, I don't see that, most likely it could be a user permission. It could have something to do under your general settings. So just shoot in a quick ticket or chat to support and they will be able to help you. Uh, or if you need to, you can send an email to support at jackrabbittech.com. If you haven't already, everybody, request to join our Facebook users group. We moderate this all of the time. There's a dedicated team of us. We check everybody that requests. So it is a safe space for you. It's not just only for support, but, you know, if you, I said to somebody the other day, you know, if you're looking to install, you know, new floors in your studio and you want to bounce an idea or, you know, ideas on how to maybe you know, handle a certain situation with the parents. Uh, it is a safe space for you. You can go in there and uh, reach out to your fellow business owners. Uh, do follow us on Instagram. Sometimes we do run some kind of different little contests and stuff there. I did just show you uh, quickly our YouTube channel, but 
definitely subscribe to that. There's just not um, only the Help Center videos in there. If you click on playlists, I have some magical minutes, which are just like quick two, three minute tutorials on, you know, a, maybe a sticky topic or, you know, a new feature that's been released. And uh, that is it, everybody. I'm just going to have one last look in the chat to see if there were any co last questions that the girls didn't get to. Well, thank you, Angela. Thank you, guys. Glad you like it. I was excited to do this one. Oh, how do you make a test parent portal? Uh, there's not really a way to make, like, say, a test parent portal, but you can, and I highly recommend, have a, you know, like yourself in there as a family and go in and kind of do that. Even if you act, if you're going to have to activate the parent portal in order for you to go in, but if your parents don't know about your parent portal yet, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, there's also an email uh, template uh, that we have uh, for when you do activate your parent portal to explain to your parents, you know, like, hi, we just launched our parent portal. This is how you can get in. Uh, all of those have been recently updated too. They're all nice and fresh. Uh, Yes, Rhonda, it's recorded. You'll get that tomorrow. Uh, sure, yeah, I can um, just give me one second. Uh, do. Okay. So this Help Center article right here, it says right now to launch the staff portal remotely, but it has the same uh, directions of how to. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, right here. Sorry, wrong one. So save and launch remote access for your staff portal uh, as an app on a mobile device. It is the exact same thing uh, with the parent portal. So if they go into their web browser, they open it and then it gives them the directions here. So they have some screenshots here of how they use it. I'm an iPhone use user, so I only know how to do it uh, on my iPhone, but then it just adds it and then it adds it, you'll see right here. So it'll be here and then they can add it. So this is not uh, Jackrabbit Plus, it's not like, a customized app, but it is a way for your parents to save the parent portal on their phone. Oh, thank you, Laura, for getting that in there for me. Uh, yeah, a lot of people don't realize that you can do that. You can do that with any website at all. If you frequent any website at all, all the time, you can actually like save that as a little uh, button. And let's just see here. So just last things, if you are interested in becoming a beta, you can click on that there and get an email to uh, out to our beta testers as well. If you want to stay up on all of the new releases, make sure to sign up. We have one more release uh, notes at the end of the year, and it will come out like just after that next release. So our next release is on the 16th and the webinar i believe it's on the 21st or the 22nd of december so right before christmas so make sure to sign up for that that one's usually a little bit shorter and then the last thing i want to let you all know about our checkup calls so if you haven't recently everybody i highly encourage you to sign up for a checkup call somebody from support they will go over you know all of your settings with you if you have questions about your staff portal your time clock QuickBooks, anything that I went over today. Oh, be a beta tester. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything that I went over today, you can uh, sign up for those. I highly, highly, highly encourage that. And thanks for tuning in, everybody. If you know of anybody that may find this useful, just send them the link to sign up. This will be available on demand in a couple of hours. But again, I will send out, or Amber will, send out a link to the recording and a link to the slide deck for you tomorrow. 
Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Rebecca, for answering all those questions. Stay safe, everyone.